Welcome to another presentation about the origin of the Carolina Bays. Today, I will be discussing Flamingo Bay in South Carolina, which contains shock fractured quartz, indicating the bay experienced high pressure during its formation. The sandy rim of the bay also shows inverted stratigraphy, which corresponds to an overturned flap and adds support for the impact origin of the Carolina Bays. This information was brought to my attention in two emails. On May 30, 2024, Austin Cole Carlisle sent me an email with an image of a course showing inverted stratigraphy. He said, hey Antonio, here's something else that may shock you. Did I just find another example of inverted rim stratigraphy? This is from a presentation by Christopher Moore from back in 2012. Austin Cole Carlisle knew of another case of inverted stratigraphy that I had discussed in a previous video. Austin has studied the LiDAR images from Michael Davies very diligently, and he has found some Carolina bays that converge over Canada rather than the Great Lakes. This is potential evidence that multiple extraterrestrial impacts on the ice sheet that covered Canada were involved in the formation of the Carolina bays. Austin will be making a presentation about his findings at the Cosmic Summit from June 14th to June 17th, 2024 in Greensboro, North Carolina. I went back to the presentation by Christopher Moore that Austin mentioned. I was familiar with this paper because it describes the hypothesis that the Carolina Bays formed by wind and water mechanisms and compares the Carolina Bays to thermocarst lakes in Alaska and Russia. The presentation in 2012 was attended by Michael Davies, who witnessed a failed attempt to replicate Kasharovsky's experiment during a demonstration after the meeting. In 2020, I created a video called Debunking Kaczorowski 1977 that described the failure of Kaczorowski's experiment to produce mathematically elliptical structures and overlapping structures by wind and water mechanisms. Slide number 45 of the presentation had the inverted stratigraphy information that Austin sent me. This is experimental data that is independent of any hypothesis. An aerial image showing the location from where the Flamingo Bay sample was taken was reported in a paper published in 2024 by Christopher Moore. The paper explains that dating at Flamingo Bay has been difficult due to the acidic and heavily leached sandy sediments. No radiocarbon dates of Paleoamerican age have been obtained from this site, and the OSL age estimates have provided ages with large uncertainties. Luminescence dating is perhaps the most critical for establishing a landform geochronology. With respect to Flamingo Bay, five single-grain OSL dates collected during the 2009 field season returned minimum age model estimates consistent with the observed archaeostratigraphy at the site. These age estimates range from 5.0 kiloannum Ka at 35 cm below the surface to 15.5 kiloannum at 80 cm below the surface. H estimates of 9.2 Ka and 11.5 Ka bracket early archaic occupation at Flamingo Bay. Finally, a 13.1 Ka OSL date at 100 cm below the surface statistically overlaps with the 15.5 Ka data higher in the profile and may indicate a thicker package of potentially younger dry as H sediments within the upper meter of the sand rim at Flamingo Bay. Notice that the interpretation of the inverted stratigraphy does not consider that the rim of the bay is an overturned flap created by an impact. This will be discussed in greater detail later. Four days before receiving Austin's email, I had received an email from Curtis Nixon. It said, Dear Antonio, I want to bring to your attention the following. Christopher Moore, an archaeologist in the South Carolina Institute for Archaeology and Anthropology, has put up a YouTube video about new finds supporting the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. He reports finding shock quartz, iron microspherules, and more. I will be bringing your work to his attention. Kind regards, Curtis. The email had a link to a video. The video featured Christopher Moore talking about the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis, which proposes that pieces of a comet crashed into a Earth 12,800 years ago, setting off environmental change that wiped out the woolly mammoth and other megafauna. Chris talks about the evidence that he has published in a new paper, including shock fractured quartz, which is a classic indicator of an impact event. In science, you go with the evidence. The Aeolian lacustrine hypothesis has been losing support because it cannot explain the mathematically elliptical geometry of the bays, the overlapping bays, and the radial orientation toward the Great Lakes. The new evidence from Christopher Moore's work provides additional support for the impact origin of the Carolina Bays. The new paper is titled 
platinum, shock fractured quartz, microspherules, and melt glass widely distributed in eastern USA at the Younger Dryas sunset 12,800 years ago. The abstract says, Sediment sequences spanning the 12,800-year-old Lower Younger Dryas boundary, YDB, were investigated at three widely separated sites in eastern North America, Parsons Island, Maryland, and Newton Build Sandpit in southern New Jersey, and Flamingo Bay, South Carolina. All sequences examined exhibit peak abundances of platinum, microspherules, and melt glass representing the YDB cosmic impact layer resulting from the airburst impacts of a fragmented comet 12,800 years ago. The evidence is consistent with the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, recorded at approximately 50 other sites across North and South America, Europe, Asia, and the Greenland ice sheet. These sequences were also examined for shock fractured quartz based on a recent study suggesting that low shock metamorphism may result from low altitude bolide airbursts similar to that observed during near surface atomic detonations. Now, for the first time in a suite of well separated sites in North America, we report in the YDB the presence of quartz grains exhibiting shock fractures containing amorphous silica. Figure 16 shows shock fractured quartz grains from Newtonville's site, Parsons Island site, and Flamingo Bay. Images were acquired using optical microscopy and scanning electron microscopy, SEM. Yellow arrows identify selected shock fractures. Visible fractures were subsequently determined by electron backscatter diffraction, EBSZ, and transmission electron microscopy, TEM, to contain amorphous silica. In panels E and H, the red bars mark selected areas of undulous extinction that occur under cross polarizers when different parts of the grain reach extinction at different polarities. This optical phenomenon commonly results from heterogeneous distortion of the crystal's lattice by mechanical or thermal stress. We saw this image earlier when we discussed the inverted stratigraphy. The sample was taken from the sand rim of Flamingo Bay. In this image, I added the ellipse corresponding to the perimeter of the bay. The modern satellite image shows roads that did not exist in the aerial image obtained in 2009. Flamingo Bay is almost imperceptible without LIDAR. Laser ranging technology has really improved visualization of the Carolina Bays. Flamingo Bay is a relatively rare kind of Carolina Bay because it is located in hilly terrain. Such bays can only exist on flat hilltops because otherwise they are destroyed by water erosion on inclined terrain. The colorized topography uses a 10-meter cyclic perceptive color ramp. Flamingo Bay appears to be almond-shaped in this LiDAR image. This is typical of Carolina Bays and place on inclined terrain because the basin is stretched downhill. Nevertheless, we can fit an ellipse to Flamingo Bay by selecting points along the perimeter. The colorized topography makes it possible to select points where the red color transitions to the pink color. The fit of the elliptical curve is fairly good. Only one point is outside the ellipse where the shape of the bay has been distorted by the inclination of the terrain. The basin has a width of 443 meters and a length of 623 meters. The major axis of the bay is oriented to an azimuth of 168 degrees. Extending the major axis of Flamingo Bay toward the Great Lakes comes close to Saginaw Bay at a distance of 1,187 kilometers. Saginaw Bay has been proposed as an impact point from which glacier ice boulders were launched by the impact of a comet fragment. From the width to length ratio, we can calculate that the angle of impact was 45.3 degrees. This would also correspond to the launch angle. Using ballistic equations, we can calculate that the glacierized boulder that made Flamingo Bay was launched at a speed of 3.412 km per second. It had a flight time of 8.2 minutes and reached a height of 300 km above the surface of the Earth. The trajectory was a suborbital space flight in the vacuum of space. The projectile that made this basin had a diameter of approximately 124 meters. The impact energy was equivalent to 9.58 megatons of TNT and produced seismic vibrations of magnitude 8.1. Such an impact clearly had enough energy to create shock fractured quartz. Chris Moore has published the dates obtained from the sediment columns of Flamingo Bay in several papers. We will now discuss the significance of the inverted stratigraphy from an impact perspective. Impact cratering displaces material laterally by horizontal compressive forces and ejects debris ballistically to produce stratigraphically uplifted rims around the cavity. The book by Professor J. Melosh, published in 1989, illustrates the inverted stratigraphy of a crater rim. 
If we obtain a core sample from the rim of an impact crater, we would see the youngest material in the top layer, followed by older material excavated by the projectile from a deeper layer, and going deeper, we would find the young material that was the surface of the terrain at the time of the impact. This is exactly what was found in the rim of Flamingo Bay. Ted Bunch and 17 co-authors published a paper in 2012 with the title Very High Temperature Impact Melt Products as Evidence for Cosmic Airburst and Impacts 12,900 Years Ago. The paper describes SLOs, which are silicious scoria-like objects, and spherules. Both SLOs and spherules are composed of shock-fused vesicular silicious glass, which is texturally similar to volcanic scoria. The SLOs are irregularly shaped. The paper also describes inverted stratigraphy in the rim of a Carolina Bay. At the time that Ted Bunch's Melt Products paper was written, the Carolina Bays were thought to have formed by gradualistic wind and water mechanisms, so the significance of the inverted stratigraphy in the core sample from the rim of a bay in Blackville, South Carolina, was not recognized, and the anomalous reading was discarded. I discussed the paper by Ted Bunch in an earlier video titled Inverted Stratigraphy Confirms Impact Origin of the Carolina Bays. Now that the rim of Flamingo Bay has also been shown to have inverted stratigraphy, the hypothesis for the impact origin of the Carolina Bays seems to be gaining support. Thank you for joining me in the investigation of the Carolina Bays and the Younger Dryas Cataclysm. The Carolina Bays should not be neglected. Ask your geology professors to discuss the Carolina Bays because they are the most prevalent geological structures in the Atlantic coastal plain. There's a link to the LiDAR visualization tool in the description of the video. My book about the Carolina Bays is available on Amazon. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays and other scientific topics.